regarding the clip in 2017 you see this eclipse right here august 21st 2017 so you see how it crosses the united states this one right here it was a total solar eclipse It went over the United States. Then, uh, 2023, there's another one that crossed over the United States a little bit lower, right? October 14th. And now, 2024, by the way, this one right here in the true calendar happened on a day of fast, meaning a day of affliction. Now, 2024, we have this other one. You see how this one goes like, let's see it from left to right, goes down. And the one coming from left to right goes up, crossing once again the United States. This on April 8th, that will happen on the 7th, meaning, no, the 6th day of Matzot, Unleavened Bread, which is after they killed Mashiach. In fact, it is after he went up to heaven. So Yahushua is the light of the world. When he went up, the world became dark, spiritually speaking, just like this day. It will be darkened because of the eclipse. And if we unite these eclipses, they make this big X over the United States, which can be interpreted as Yahweh um, putting a sign on the United States that it is over as an empire. Remember that in 2026, in 2026, um, the United States will reach the highest amount of years uh, or the amount of years, which is the average of the duration of an empire. So according to history, the United States is in its last days. And according to science in the heavens, it appears to be confirmed. It appears that this coming eclipse is like the last confirmation of it, um, of the United States coming to an end as the world, um, the world power, as it has been for so long. Uh, we know its economy is about to explode from so much inflation. Um, and, well, you guys know the precedent and how bad it is. <laughs> and uh, the elections that are coming are also key. And it's going to divide the United States a lot, sadly, which is also part of what this X represents. Now, the positive of it is that the X in the pictographic is also the letter Tav. So in Hebrew is the Taf. So he would represent that Yahweh comes to seal his chosen few. And, and if we take it like that, and hopefully that is part of the sign, <laughs> um, then there will be a lot of sealing in the United States. Um, the last is represented by the letter Taf. So it, be, it could be connected also to the manifestation of the last. To seal the chosen few by the end of the United States, meaning uh, the end of his uh, world power. Um, it's interesting that it will be fulfilled on a feast, an important feast. And if we take into account the other eclipse that I mentioned, then this is the shape that is formed, which as you can see, it is the letter Aleph in the pictographic. So you can see the Aleph and the Taf formed by these three eclipses 
from 2017 till 2024. And remember that in 2017, there was a great sign in the heavens on September 23rd, which is what we see in Revelation 12, Virgo dressed in the sun with the moon on her feet and a crown of 12 stars over her head. To also announce the coming of the last. The last is the Taf, but it's also the ox because he comes from the tribe of Ephraim, the tribe that came from Yahusef. They are both represented by the ox. And the ox is what the letter Aleph represents. Its shape is the head of an ox. Here would be upside down. This would be the head. This would be the horns. And these would be the ears. So Aleph and Taf, as in the last, it would refer as the descendant of Ephraim coming as the last to seal the chosen few. So that is the powerful and positive sign that I see from those three eclipses. But from the fact that the end of the United States is approaching and is obvious, even if there were no signs in the heavens, um, the fact that it is an X, um, that could be obviously negative for the United States. Uh, what else? And like I said, the... Um, uh, what was I going to say? What else? Oh, yeah. And the fact that it's happening, that one of them happened on a fast and the other one happened or is going to happen on on a feast um that i believe is key to what yahweh may do other than that in this second eclipse that will happen on on matzot uh coming april it is possible that a comet will be seen which will be uh in june i think is when it's going to be seen in a clearer way but um, it may be seen, it is possible for it to be seen on during that eclipse. So that will be a huge sign added to it that would add strength to the message because the comet is called devil because it is seen as it, if it had two horns. Um, in history, there are many stories that tell of times in which People have seen a comet in the heavens and then something huge happens on the earth, mainly either a good or very, very wicked leader appears after a comet. The comet looks like a horn in the heavens and a horn in scriptures represents a leader, um, an authority. Remember that the beast is a little horn, according to Daniel, and Remember that the second beast of Revelation has two horns, like a lamb. So these two horns could represent the two beasts of Revelation 13. The leader, the world leader, and the false prophet. Two horns. And it's called devil, the comet. And it will appear when the X is finally forming over the United States. When the world will be in darkness during the feast in which they killed Mashiach. And in the positive sense, the two horns could represent the two witnesses, right? Um, the witness like Moshe and the witness Eliyahu. Also remember that according to the Hebrew, when Moshe came down from Mount uh, Sinai with the tablets, he had horns on his head, according to the Hebrew. Horns of light. So a comet looks like light and like horn. And this one, horns in plural. The last is called the horn of iron, according to the book of prophet Micah. So that comet, I believe, could be foretelling the coming of the two witnesses and the coming of the two beasts of Revelation 13. I believe it could be referring to both manifestations. The positive and the negative, just like I mentioned, the positive and the negative regarding this X or Aleph and Taf that is formed over the United States. And lastly, um, 
let me go to Stellarium. So if we go to April 8th, when the eclipse will happen, the sun will be in Pisces. Let's see. Okay. So you see how Pisces represents also the two witnesses that are next to the lamb, right? The lamb would be Aries. So here's Pisces as the two witnesses. One of them, the son of righteousness. They are both in front of the lamb, who is Mashiach. Remember the two that are in front of the mighty one of all the earth. So Aries is the lamb, Mashiach. The two witnesses, one is the son of righteousness. And that's when the eclipse will happen that day. Um, and that day, as you can see, you can see here, there are two planets right here together at the feet of the lamb. Then we have two other ones in Pisces, Mercury and the moon. Then we have Venus, then Mars and Saturn. So we have one, two, three, four with Mercury that is right here, five, six, and I think there's one that is missing. But I know it's there. It's just too little. So, um, oh yeah, it's the planet Neptune. It's around, but it's too little to be found like that. Let me, if I put, there you go. It's right there. So it's very hidden. And only if I get too close, it says the name. So you see how we have seven planets plus the sun and the moon. That's nine. So that means all of the luminaries that move through the 12 constellations, all of them would be aligned on the day of the eclipse. Supposedly, all the combination of those seven planets, the sun and the moon, an eclipse, and if we add the comet, that is a combination that has never happened in history. So that would mean it's an important sign. And the fact that it's happening on a feast, to me, it is huge. So what I was saying, the alignment is huge. I find interesting the two planets that are on the feet of Aries and the two planets that are in Aquarius as in first and last beginning and end the lamb who died for our sins and the one who brings the water of life, the, the testimony of Mashiach, the teaching that Yahweh sent into the world to fill the earth with the water as it says that Yahweh will, uh, that the knowledge of Yahweh will fill the world like water fills the sea covers the seabed so mars and saturn over here um well i'm sure we could speak more about it and what it all represents but just that also there are some who connect oh yeah something else that i wanted to say some connect this uh as a whale this constellation that you see there and they connect well it's, it's a well you could you could well it's a sea creature <laughs> and i wouldn't be surprised if um in some cultures is a well but the figure that you see there the face i don't know what it is let me if i the name itself means uh this uh, figure um you see dating back to the Sumerians and Babylonians. So that's where that figure comes from, or that name for that constellation. And you say, who is associated with their mythical dragon, Tiamat. Now, this is pretty much Leviathan, right? Leviathan is also called Tiamat by the Sumerians and the Babylonians. 
It is a sea dragon, the dragon of the sea, and it represents Samael. But also when the scripture says that Jonah was swallowed by a big fish, it, it makes reference to this myth, well, this dragon, Leviathan. Um, you see, it says some kind of sea monster. And it was the, it was the monster sent to the bar on Andromeda. So just like there was a monster in the sea that was sent to swallow Yona. So all that we were just saying regarding this, the alignment of all the planets, including the sun and the moon, all the nine who go through the 12 constellations will be closed together during the eclipse. The seven as the menorah, the nine as the Hanukkiah, the nine spirits, I mean, the nine gifts of the spirit, the nine fruits of the spirit, the seven, everything that has to deal with seven, completion, of course, nine gives reference to, or makes reference to birth. Um, there will be an eclipse making an X over the United States. That eclipse will pass over a place called Yona. The coming of the Son of Man will be like the days of Lot, the days of Noah. But also Yahushua said that the evil generation would not receive a sign except the sign of Yona. Which refers to the fact that the last will die and resurrect three and a half days later. But it's amazing that the eclipse will happen right over the constellation that represents Leviathan, the creature that swallowed Yona. And the eclipse will be seen or passed over a town called Yona and then over two towns called Nineveh. According to some, it will go over eight towns called Nineveh, but I found some... Um, fact check <laughs> that is said that it wouldn't be seen on eight places meaning there are places called Nineveh, Nineveh uh, in the trajectory of the eclipse but only in two of those places called Nineveh the eclipse will be seen total in the in the way that uh that it should I guess so there are other places called Nineveh but it won't be seen as in those two so how amazing that it goes the eclipse through Yona and then to Nineveh as meaning that is a sign of Yona when the eclipse is right over Leviathan who swallowed Yona for him to go to Nineveh and preach in a city that would take three days to walk around it just like the last and Eliyahu will last three years and a half preaching around the earth who is acting as Nineveh. So, yeah, it is very important. I do believe that sign, Matzot, the alignment, it will go through Yona and Nineveh, is right over Leviathan, is in Pisces, like the two witnesses. There will be a comet um, that could refer to the coming of the two beasts and the coming of the two witnesses. So almost 10, and I guess I could continue. But yeah, it seems to be very significant. Just the fact that there's an eclipse, an alignment, and a comet. <laughs> At the same time, only that is huge. When we add the fact that it's going to be seen on Yona, Nineveh, and Nineveh, that is going to make a cross, a tav, an aleph, the timing in the United States as an empire getting to the limit, the timing in the sense that it will happen on a feast. Um, everything is very, very powerful, I, I do believe. So hopefully that was clear. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything.